A growing skills vacuum in the UK is threatening the future of Britain's high-tech industry and the economic recovery. That's according to business leaders. The CBI is calling on the government to cut university tuition fees for science and maths degrees so that more students learn the skills needed. They say future growth depends on it. As the Chancellor prepares to deliver his budget next Wednesday, George Allegaia has been travelling across the UK asking if we really are on the right road to recovery. And tonight, he's in Bristol. George. Thank you, Sophie, and good evening. I'm at Britain's biggest research centre for robotics. About a hundred scientists work here, from mechanical engineers to psychologists. They're some of the best brains in their business. Now, Hayes here, he's trying to find out if a robot can tell whether I'm happy or sad. Now, the scientists, they may know what they're doing, but the real test for our economy is to find out whether their ideas can be turned into money-making businesses. You could buy one of these off the shelf, but that's where the similarity ends. Now, what's special about this particular drone is that it doesn't need one of these, these old-fashioned radio transmitters. All the decisions are being made by this, a computer. The scientists say a robot could fly itself into inaccessible disaster zones and relay vital information to search and rescue teams. The potential is vast. Many experts believe robotics is the new technological frontier. I see the word chocolate isorium lollies with... With labour costs going up and an ageing population, robots will play an ever bigger role, both in the workplace and at home. I think robots are going to be crucial uh, in our future, particularly as we are... Uh, age we're living longer but not necessarily more healthy lives um, robots can help support us from a medical point of view and also make us more competitive from in manufacturing and are you getting enough investment definitely not now when it comes to the amount spent by government on research and development it turns out we're way behind our competitors so how much do other countries spend jerry here has got the answers in Germany, it's double the amount. In China, it's five times as much. In the US, it's a whopping ten times. So we're in a race to the top. The UK is full of really talented engineers and scientists. Our big challenge is can we support them through funding streams to enable them to stay in the UK, to develop their ideas in the UK. Aircraft technology is one area where Britain does have an edge. This is the Airbus Design Centre just outside Bristol. More than 2,000 engineers work here. The um, titanium rods react to the torque of the brake. But across Britain, we're only turning out a third of the young engineers the country will need. Britain's aerospace sector is second only to the United States, and the government is backing it with hard cash. It is the greatest level of investment from government into aerospace since the days of Concord, since the early 1960s. So when I say it's a big step forward, it's a huge step forward. And the area to invest in is innovation. But if robotics is the future, then it will need a similar level of commitment. The great fear is that Britain has the brains, but could miss out on making money from their work. So investment is the key, but the big question is that the robotics industry is just one of many sectors who are looking for taxpayers' money. How to allocate that money? Well, that's what the Chancellor's got to tell us when he delivers his budget next week. Our chief economics correspondent, Hugh Pym, is with us. What sort of challenges will George Osborne face? Well, George, one thing that's become clear in the last couple of days is the need to have a recovery based on more than just consumer spending and borrowing. You do need businesses investing in machinery and equipment and exporting more goods and services abroad. Now, the Chancellor knows that. He's admitted the recovery is not as balanced as it should be. That's why I think you can be pretty sure that in his budget box next week, there will be measures to help business helping, for example, with tax breaks. Now, that's all very well, and centres like this are very impressive, but the scale of the challenge is illustrated by figures out today. UK research and development actually fell in the latest year for which figures are available. 
and it's now below the EU average. So that's business. Will he be tempted to do something to help families and households in the run-up to the general election? Labour, of course, are saying the cost of living squeeze hasn't gone away. More needs to be done on gas and electricity bills. We'll find out in exactly a week's time. Many thanks, Q. And, of course, you'll be following that speech just about word for word, I should think. So, what have we learned in our journey from Livingston in Scotland to Bristol here? It seems to me there are very few people, if any, who doubt a recovery is underway. From the business people we spoke to, there was real optimism. But from low-paid workers to higher-rate taxpayers, there was a question that kept recurring. When am I going to feel it in my pocket? Well, that's it from us here in Bristol. It's now back to you in London, Sophie. George, thank you. A young man who worked at Westminster and claims the former Deputy Speaker Nigel Evans sexually assaulted him has told Preston Crown Court that a senior Tory said the MP couldn't resign because the timing wasn't right. The trial was told that the alleged victim met the then Tory Chief Whip, Patrick McLaughlin, in 2009.